Welcome to the Space Coast Real Estate Show. I am your host, Roofer Rob, with my most awesome team, Jesse Hall, on the. I yeah, guess you're right. The controls. The, the, I was going to say the, the switches DJ and faders. Kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> we have home. Michelle Carpenter from Inspiring Home Design and Re. Staging, re- Staging and Redesign. <laughs> I did that. In, I did that. In, I know, but it's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have John Maselli here from Movement Mortgage. Movement Mortgage. And today's show is all about buying. Last show, we talked about selling a house and the different things that you needed to worry about and focus on to get the most money for your house. Right. And now this episode, we're going to talk about buying. So make sure you go back and listen to that episode and Space review Coast it podcast. because that was an hour-long of action-packed professional like industry people giving you the best knowledge tools myths debunking the whole thing you know everything you need to know one stop episode it was jam packed this yeah this buyer episode is we're just going to be following through so at the seller's open house we met some buyers and who was at the open house well of course we had michelle with her beautiful staging going on and she was there handing out all kinds of goodies as, as, as well as uh, John Maselli of Movement Mortgage, he was there, of course, offering on-site uh, qualifications and just getting people you know, excited and ready. And if they haven't already talked and, uh, or spoken to a lender, he was there, of course, uh, to offer what, what they're going to need in order to prepare to buy the house. So our open houses are always a lot of fun. We just don't have them here because nothing stays on the market long enough. To where you, <laughs> you can you can even the you know have sold that one before the cookies are done. It's <laughs> yeah before the even before the co- go out. before <laughs> the the cookies even enter the oven <laughs> or even defrost or even get picked up at the market, <laughs> it's already under contract. It's There's still it, dough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so the call f- yeah the yeah the cookie analogy is there. So with that, the buyer now is highly interested, and they went to John, and John, what do they need? What's that, what's that conversation happen like with, with that buyer at the open house? So the first step would be to get pre-qualified so they would go to loanappliapproved.com, mm-hmm. fill out our online easy app application, and then I can begin the process, which involves pulling credit, right. um, reviewing documents, and qualifying them for a certain uh, price that they can afford. Mm-hmm. And um, at that point, I hand a pre-qualification lender letter over to the realtor and they start making offers there you go and it has to happen in that order right guys Pre- pretty much yeah well, right john talk about it a little bit just like the difference just for some of our new listeners between the various mortgages like between a fixed yeah. rate between fha va you know just for 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 the noobs out there okay so we do have uh first time buyer programs however these kind of programs the grants and the seconds are kind of dried up right now because you know the states is using those funds for things like um eviction prevention and foreclosure stuff because of covid so those are a little hard to come by they do have some tax implications and some timing implications um you know if i have a young person i try to keep them out of that at all costs unless they absolutely have to mm-hmm. um, but we do have first time home buyer conventional loans like home readies where three percent down even less than a fha if you qualify for a conventional wow i like or those we have the fha loans which are you know 3.5 uh oh typically the the conventional down payment is five percent the fhas are 3.5 percent and uh, they have an, a higher debt to income ratio threshold. So, you know, you can spend a little more of your income on your house than mm-hmm. is allowed in a conventional. And then, of course, we have the VAs for our, our great veterans. Mm-hmm. And um, if you are a veteran and you qualify for th- this, is probably the best product you can get into. Uh, no down payment. And a lot of times you can work the closing costs into the deal, so the veteran comes out, you know, basically c- at closing with, with very money. little or no yes. yeah. I, I've seen them where There's they zero get out of pocket. Back. Yep. Yeah, exactly. They get their down payment back at closing. <laughs> well, you know, because it's, it's a great feeling to, yeah, to some get some that done. Sometimes uh, the title company can can work some things where the uh, with all the the credit coming back, 
it almost like pays off you know you, you take cash or like your first month is free right mm-hmm. that's how they kind of work it um, and so it's always exciting to be like, wow, I get a, uh, my first month of mortgage is free. That's great. You know, because it really does help with all the costs of moving and so forth. But you can either take the cash or just take the free month. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, those are some good products. Um, is there anything out there that people may not be aware of? I, I know sometimes we talk about bridge loans or, or balloon payments and all these things. Is this, is this something that uh, a residential borrower uh would be interested in well these are timing questions um uh-huh. you know the arm loans have gotten you know stigma about them because sure. of the 08 crash and everybody got you know yeah unscrupulous arm loans that ballooned but they do have their place um you know if you're going into a short-term situation a lot of people in this area are engineers they move into be um, engineers to work for the larger corporations and then a lot of times they get relocated so and they know it ahead of time so in that instance you know a, a five a five-year lo- uh, arm would be good for them because it's fixed for the first five or seven or ten years however you set the arm up and uh, there's even interest only kind of options too so it can be very affordable if you're on a t- on a time schedule as long as you refinance or sell that house before that first initial period ends um, you know you're gonna get in a great rate yeah well everybody was att- attracted I remember those times uh, I was licensed back then uh, in 02 so when by the time 05 and 06 and all these arms I mean every, everybody was talking about the arms like it was like the the cat's meow because you could get in there for about 5% which is about 3% lower than just a conventional 15 or 30 and they forget that as an adjustable rate well that that does expire and that becomes adjustable in about five to seven years and it could jump from your four or five percent all the way up to 12 whatever that ceiling is whatever that that yep. product that you got into but sometimes there, the ceiling went right up to 11 sometimes there was no ceiling you know depending on you know what kind of product so yeah when your mortgage goes from a four percent APR to an 11% APR, of course you're not going to feel good about making that yeah, payment. Absolutely. But again, that's what arms are for. They were for the investors because they knew that you were going to get out, hold for or get in get, and hold for a little bit, and then get get right out before that term uh, continued. And then you and then it, you know would be a satisfied loan, and the product would would be um, would be off the table, you know, and uh, and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But it was really great for that. It wasn't designed to be a long hold play of a, a product. temporary yeah. tool right to and also investors. too prior to the dodd frank rules you know they were giving those loans out to, i don't know if you've seen the big short but they were oh, uh, yeah. in the they were giving um loans out in people's dogs names and <laughs> and you, you had you had people who were paying cash yeah um you know or they were they were cash earners i'm sorry cash and earners yeah and they stated loans exactly so yeah. so you had these dancers these guys were preying on dancers because of all this cash they were having um you know they they weren't a, a w2 they weren't 1099 it was like yep. just straight cash five six seven loans and properties and, and they convinced them like yeah you, you should have five properties <laughs> and they just wrote loans after loans so it was very unscrupulous uh you know i hope the people that uh you know brought that to a critical time in our economy's history um i wish they would find justice or or be held accountable I'm yeah, not sure. If, I'm not sure if they. I mean, no, count, countywide, countywide, I believe was a big um, casualty, and and I think some others um, are are left forever to be. You know, I, I think Lehman Brothers was another yeah, casualty. Lehman. They just changed names. Well, of but course. The, the, the practices are still going on, unfortunately. Well, I hope. Uh, yeah, well, I hope less because back then the the, the appraisals weren't su- weren't a safety net either because yeah, normally. If a property appreciates 200% in three years, there's a governing body that says, this doesn't compute. We got to, you know, yeah. put some kind of threshold on there. But it was just a wild, wild west. It seemed like, you know, people were just spending gross amounts of money for property that was literally uh, a third of the price two years ago. It's crazy. I mean, I saw it was it. just doubling every year, like for just arbitrarily, like no reason. Or you see appraisers coming from Tampa, you know, it's like, yeah, how, they don't how, know the market, can, how, how can an appraiser... And, and you know, sure mm-hmm. they can do the market anywhere, but yeah. I would just feel you would want to stick with appraisers in that county, just mm-hmm. because Definitely that would just is. make more sense. And 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 I'm glad you mentioned that because while we have John here, I know I know um, John may not be with us for the rest of the show, 
But while we're here, John, um, besides the appraisers and other safety nets, how, how do people know they're not overpaying for a property? Well, I mean, you know, the definition of a market value is right. what someone's willing to pay for a property. Sure. So, um, you know, it really boils down to the value and also, you know, the mm -hmm. appraised value that lenders use because the lenders required to get a, a appraiser out there so we understand the the deal mm -hmm. um do appraisers are, are, are appraisers botching deals nowadays a lot a lot yeah they're just so getting it wrong like just in my opinion yeah. um you know there's plenty of six month data but they mm -hmm. they go back 12 months so the the six month data is probably a more accurate representation it of the market now as it's opposed to right it's less apples and apples and yeah. more apples in a year ago a, a, a rotten yeah. orange <laughs> and the other thing uh, we're seeing is that a lot of appraisers you know when they work for um mm -hmm. the the big appraisal companies that just assign them so right. the those companies charge the lenders a, a certain fee a flat fee right and then they farm it out to the least you know the least the most bitter. affordable right right and then that person like they're not making a lot of money, so they rush right through it to get to the next one. Because now the the more volume they do is how they make their money, and right. so you know, is the accuracy. So quantity are they taking over the, quality? Are they taking the time to mm. re do adjustments, or are they just looking for properties outside the area? You know, right. So, so those are the big question marks. So I think that's that that sums up a lot of concerns for any borrowing uh, buyer out there. Uh, of course, uh, if you're paying cash, you could fast forward through that whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> True, uh, but that brings us to I'll miss you. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's still but, good to know. Though. But we're gonna, we're gonna go to break, and on on our return, we're gonna actually dive into. Okay, now we're walking into homes. You know what to expect. You know, so we're gonna. You know, now we got the pre call letter. Now it's we know how much we can afford, and we're gonna hit the street. And I think everybody has an opinion about what that looks like. Um, as we come back from this short break, please don't go anywhere. And a uh, reminder, you're listening to the Space Coast Real Estate Show again Space Coast from Podcast. Space Coast Podcast Studios. <laughs> we'll be right back. Roofer Rob here with RRCA Roofing and Reconstruction Contractors of America. We are an insurance restoration specialist. What is that and how is that important? Well, let me tell you, in Florida, what we find is most homeowners sign up for their insurance, pay a premium, and then when they file a claim, the insurance company tries to pay them a minimum. Not cool. We specialize in using the software that the insurance companies use and holding them accountable to the policy that they sold you and ensuring that you get a premium roof for your premium. Check out RooferRob.com and download my free report on the Florida roofing secrets that the insurance companies don't want you to know. In that report, I'll give you all of the secrets on how you can be successful and get a premium roof for the premium that you spend. Or you can call me direct at 321-368-1881. You're listening to Space Coast Podcast, home of the greatest podcasts on the Space Coast. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, email us at spacecoastpodcast at hotmail.com. Space Coast Podcast. Talk hard! Welcome back to Space Coast Real Estate Show. I am your host, Rufa Rob. Right before we left, we were talking about this. Uh, we went through talking with John Maselli from Movement Mortgage and discussed the various mortgage options. So now we got our mm -hmm. pre-qualification letter, and right. now we're going to seek out Jesse. And that would bring you to me. So after a brief, uh, and it really shouldn't be a, a, a huge... Um, commitment. A lot of my first uh, consultations, let's just say, you know, we met at the open house now, maybe the open house, 
maybe it's off the market, right? We didn't get there uh, soon enough. Uh, but John, we still have a pre-qualification now that, guess what? A better foot forward, right? Because we were at an open house and we just met and you were unprepared. But I bet somebody at that open house walked in prepared with that pre-qual and, and, and they won that offer, right? So now their offer is good. And now we gotta we got to find another home for you. Um, so we got to start with, you know, where you're looking, you know, so make sure you have some of these, uh, uh, details already kind of figured out. Uh, if it's important to uh, get a place that's easy, uh, for you to commute, for instance, you know, maybe you're in Titusville, but the, the schools that you like are in Palm Bay, but you have to find an exit, you know, home near the exit. So your commute is shortened, right? So if that's important, or if the school district is important, figure out what those non-negotiable Guess that's really going to direct where we go to. What kind of uh, material the countertops are, that's all secondary to what your non-negotiables will be. If you need a pool, then we're not going to look for any homes without a pool. Unless you decide it's okay to build a pool and, uh, and you have that fifteen or $20,000 um, in cash that you're able to, to, to find it. Otherwise, we're going to have to find something with an existing pool. Um, so, again, if, if, you have some, if you can't live without it, that's a non-negotiable. We can't. We're not going to stray off of that list. So uh, you know. So my job is to determine what you absolutely need, find things that meet those needs, and then we get into the cosmetics. You know, um, which door the the, the, the fr or which way the the front door faces. You know, um, what style pool does it have? Does it have the hot tub attached? Is it is it salt water? Is you know. So all those questions will come after the fact. And, um, and so really think about what your non-negotiables are because that will really help us where, you know, as far as like dialing in neighborhoods uh, or like kind neighborhoods, you know, if it has to be gated, certainly in a, in a good uh, school district. Well, there's many of those throughout the county, right? So, um, but if a certain area is important to you, uh, like you got to move uh, near family, whatever, whatever reason it is. So find those non-negotiables. Then we start there. We build up a list with all that criteria now that you've given me. And in this market, we may find one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or, <laughs> or wait patient. Or <laughs> we'll just have to keep our, our eyes and ears out, right? Uh, in a typical market, I mean, three years ago, I could have said, I, I promise there's going to be at least like 10 to 12 instances of houses that meet those criteria. And then we can narrow it down by looks, you know, cosmetic, you know, location, um, type of pool, you know, uh, one has a waterfall, one doesn't, you know. And then we, then we could be choosy, right? So non-negotiables first, and then we get choosy later. Um, so, you know, don't fall in love with the first house you see because of, for instance, the cosmetic stuff, the appliance pack, you know, appliance packages in the, in the kitchen. Uh, make sure you get exactly what you want because a lot of those small things you can always um, uh, improve later on. Am I right or wrong, guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what else as a buyer, how should they prepare? Now, they got their, you know, they're pre-qualified. Um, they know what they can't live without. What are some other things that, that a buyer should prepare for well Whenever talking about some of those you know cosmetic pieces and, right. and things like that um you know as staging a lot of times we do stage homes that are not quite so pretty you know mm -hmm. we hate to use the phrase uh lipstick on a pig but well, many times <laughs> um you gotta call a spade a spade <laughs> exactly you know I use that term all the time <laughs> um you know many times that's what we're doing um to some aspect but you know obviously we don't cover up any flaws that could come out in the inspection right but um that we do recommend those things to be already addressed so when a home a buyer's looking at a home that has been staged by mm -hmm. us particularly anyway um, they know that they're getting a home that may have um, some of those issues already addressed up front through our consultation with the right. seller. Um, we addressed that last week. But um, also with the staging, the buyer can kind of look at it and say, oh, okay, well, it's not quite updated yet, mm. but I can, see, I can see myself living here with what we've done with the staging and give them a glimpse of some things that they can do and, and kind of live there you know, temporarily until they have the money or I always recommend just living in a house for a little while and, and live with it and see where you need to make some changes and improvements to fit your lifestyle. Um, right. But buyers, un mm. unfortunately, you know, a lot of times we do have buyers that are in the market where they don't have that extra cash to put down toward, um, you know, remodels or updates immediately. So a lot of buyers are looking for that mm. move in ready home. So as a seller, if there's things that you can do ahead of time, 
Um, you know, and sometimes it's just simple little fixes and, you know, changing out light fixture sometimes will be a lot of things and fresh coat of paint that, right. you know, we can Absolutely. do with the seller. But buyers are definitely looking for some of those new up updates, mm -hmm. but there's things that we can do with staging that helps many times too, and buyers see that. So, um, oh, and, and, as a, and as a buyer, as you're looking, you know, at homes, um, yeah, you know, maybe you could judge, and, and that's what I like to do, like, a lot of people will buy a home based on how big their furniture is. Like they'll mm -hmm. they'll tr try to, you know, find a home that that fits whatever yeah. what they have existing. So if you do have that sectional, we all know the one, right? It's luxurious. <laughs> it's got LED I have one in my storage and unit. USB, <laughs> and it's got a cooler and the console and the armrest. I mean, we get it. You're not going to give up that thing, right? But it also can. But you also need like a thirty by thirty living space, mm -hmm. you know, to, to just for that, just yeah. to fit it. Um, you know, so. Those things, uh, you know, getting into the, the furniture and imagining you living in that space, certainly do that. Um, I and think it that's a little head, though, because mm -hmm. at this point, we, they've been approved with John. Right. They're looking at houses with you. Right. They get the house under contract, and then the yeah. next step so chronologically is our super awesome special guest today. Right. And that's TP Home Inspections before but we love having you you're an amazing inspector mm -hmm. so uh welcome back to the show thank you yeah so uh, to, le to leading chronologically we're going to have to get that buyer under contract so let's just say that you're, you figure out your non-negotiables you've shopped around um you made certain that happen with getting an offer let's just pl let's just pretend we're still in the fantasy hurdles. land and the first offer we give um it's accepted <laughs> it's yeah it's under asking and um you know <laughs> well, we can sum up they that took all of our terms yeah that whole process is it's not if you're going to get hurdles it's how many hurdles you're going to have to jump to get to the right. finish line so exactly if you look at it like a game you just You get an offer in acceptance, or, or you get an, you know you submit an offer, and then you get a counter, and that's just an opportunity just to talk and, and meet in the middle, right? So don't ever get offended because you're you're countered, you know. Um, it hope it happens 99% of the time, so um, it's rare that somebody just goes, "That sounds good, thank you," you know. I would be worried if they did. Yeah, <laughs> or, you know, maybe a red flag, like. <laughs> Why was th why were they too eager to take my offer? Um, <laughs> you know, you, you want to be met with a little bit. That's why everybody goes over, and that's why you know you're, you're you know the, the the seller will always counter with a little bit less um, than what you're asking. But you know, you meet in the middle. Every, every every party's happy now. The seller, you know, they're packing up, they're moving out, and while that's all going on, um, you know, you're probably packing and, and and you know your place, getting ready to to move. Now that you know you're getting excited, but before you get too excited, there's a couple. Let's just say um, things that have to happen. Um, one of them is a inspection, and the inspection process the, by default, the FAR bar as is contract uh, says uh, 15 uh, days is you know in parentheses as at default. So if you leave that that blank uh, uh, vacant and, and empty, then people are just going to assume it, it defaults to the uh, the FAR bar, which is 15 days. But a lot of people look at be competitive. We're going to say seven days. We're just going to cut that number in half, say seven days. Um, in that seven days, you're probably going to want to call a couple different professionals because your first call, they may be booked out. These inspection guys, I mean, Dan, you could help me out. They're, I mean, sometimes you just can't have someone the that's very next day. That's why you should day. always well, put 15 days on there just so right. that way yeah, you're Well, that's tough because you want a good inspector. But, you know. but, but you're – but when you're negotiating and you're everybody right. else has a seven-day yeah, right. you know, uh, inspection period um, – it's really tough, uh, but if you have like a bigger property or a complex property, or if you're buying a restaurant and you need a lot of different systems tested, then you need you know as much time as possible to do your due diligence. In a residential, you know, you get an, an, an inspector like TP, and they're going to come on and they're they're going to enter the house and, and, and tell us what they could expect, Dan. Well, typically, um, when we do these things, it's you give them a 15-day inspection period. That's good because nobody's mm -hmm. in a rush, you know, just like a lot of other professional companies even home inspection companies, the ones right. who are really good are busy. 
So it's not always easy to get it squeezed in into a seven day period. If you can meet somewhere in the middle, get 10 days, Right. 10 days helps a little bit because sometimes we're already close to a week out. So then you're just making everybody rush. The last thing you want your home inspector to do is Absolutely. squeeze you in and not have enough time right. to m make the house tell them its story and be able to rewrite that story so that you understand as much as you can getting into it mm -hmm. what you're actually getting into. Now, you know, to be quite fair, most of the time when I do a home inspection, the home inspection report is mostly a, a list of a lot of little things you're probably going to want to fix after you get into the house. There's not a lot of major things, but I have inspected houses that are sinking. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell that part of the foundation is actually sinking where they might need to now call a structural engineer and find out what the, the wow. impact of that is. That is rare, but it happens. But that's mm -hmm. important because sometimes, you know, power grouting or otherwise ram jacking or whatever they do to these right. uh, houses to keep I've them from sinking done. down, cool. it can be expensive. Very expensive. Tens of thousands <laughs> of dollars. Right. We don't want to get stuck with something like that after the fact. Hmm. You want somebody that knows enough about what they're doing, can take their time, and make sure that they identify that stuff in advance. Can it be fixed? Sure. I tell people all the time, unless it looks like I can get into a house and knock two or three beams out and take the whole place down, anything can be remodeled, <laughs> negotiated, remediated, right. whatever the case is. Um, but there are several things. Uh, houses that are 20-ish years old or more, the insurance companies are all going to want to understand what their risk is in insuring the house they're going to want something called a four-point inspection which is an insurance only inspection mm -hmm. and it covers the four major systems of the house they're the most expensive things to fix right. in the house the roof the hvac system the plumbing system and the electrical system you know as we go through different generations of building we've encountered different things that crop, crop up that we thought was a good idea but turned out not to be so great an idea. Right. Certain types of plumbing or electrical, things like that. Chinese oh, drywall. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Chinese drywall. <laughs> yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff. So it's important to um, to make sure that you've got enough time to procure. You want to interview several home inspectors. Make sure that you feel comfortable with who's going to be inspecting your house. As, as embarrassed as I am to say it, it takes less training and education in the state of Florida to be a home inspector than it does to be a hairdresser. Um, wow. Up until 2010, any Yahoo with a flashlight and a pickup truck could say they were a home inspector. We weren't even licensed until t 2010. Wow. So it's really important to get somebody that's got some experience and knows what they're looking at because it could end up costing money later on. I can attest to that. Right. I was with a customer today. They're, they just bought the house. They have massive stu stucco issues. They mm. have a massive leak on a flat roof. I mean, it's wow. it, like the list of stuff that they have and they're like we had an inspection too and i was mm -hmm. like whoa oh, wow. and so I, and i've worked with an investor before that the inspector didn't miss like they filled the septic tank up with dirt so oh, it wow. really is you know you gotta make sure you use a professional and if they're just in and out in 20 right. minutes 15 minutes it's probably not a thorough inspection Kind so so question. how yeah. yeah go for it should you have a new construction home inspection inspection on your an inspection on a new construction home? yeah i frequently find defects and deficiencies even on a brand new home that's never been lived in before mm -hmm. and there are things that the builder will take care of right. but it's still always better to know about them in advance right nobody's okay. perfect and if i could offer something usually there's always a um a representative of, of the builder right so there's always um, some kind of foreman or something that will come in and they'll give you the the blue tape That's you know not our just, fault yeah and just you know and so you go around and you got the little you know the the, the little um punch uh, list yeah the, the the punch list and and the blue tape and you go around to all the nick corners or all the the missing paint or you know sometimes there's paint on the tile that they missed so you just go around and, and you pick it when the whole place looks like a Dalmatian, and you're like, and you look back at the <laughs> foreman, and he's like, you know, I mean, you know, the countertops chipped, and 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 the slow close uh, cabinets don't slow close, and and everything's supposed to be, it's kind of disappointing, you know. So sometimes that foreman's just there to open a door and, and see if you like it or not. Um, but that's also an opportunity for you to maybe say, you know, I need a I need a third party to come in. And so yeah, even on the new construction, because. You know, the foreman isn't always a, the guy who sees oversees all of the subcontractors. You know, uh, he just he, you know he's told by the landscaping company, okay, we're all done. Here's the keys, and he goes by and he looks in it. You know, is is everything level? You know, I mean, you know, what what was what were the measures to make sure that the the the, the quality of that build 
was being met. Um, unless you go, of course, with like some uh, a very premium builder, which uh, at most times you'll have a hands-on process because it's like right. uh, a custom build anyway. So you're there almost every day, you know, seeing the appliances, and, you know, proving the materials and the paint colors, and, and you're there step by step. But not all builders allow you to do that. You know, you, you, you walk into a model, you sign some papers, nine months later they give you a call, hey, we're about to yeah. close, you know, let's go ahead and, and finish your financing and, 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 and get, you know, and let you get into the, the house or whatever remaining thing, you know, whatever deposits or whatever it needs for, for you to now get get into it. Um, but build, but we're going to have, that's going to be a, a separate episode um, that we'll cover uh, which will be a new construction, that's and that'll so, that'll that's go. So funny because I yeah. was thinking that right, <coughs> right before you said that, I was like, yeah. we need to have a whole show dedicated. Just oh, right. that'll, that'll be a good show. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of stuff. I mean, some of these uh, builders too, they get kind of salty if you tell them you want to bring a home inspector. Ah, uh, <laughs> salty, and, uh, and yeah. Inspect their <laughs> inspect their work. They they don't like that all very much. So maybe we'll continue that discussion when we come right. back. Great. But also, we're gonna hear from Dan and get some more tips and tricks as to what to mostly uh, look at in your home inspection. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back after this. Space Coast Podcast. Are you in the market for a new home? Perhaps you need to sell your old home and downsize or relocate. Hey there, my name is Jesse Hall with eXp Realty, and I offer professional real estate services right here on the Space Coast. Give me a call, 321-877-8737 for all of your real estate needs. Again, 321-877-8737 for all of your real estate needs. Buy, sell, invest with the best. Find out more at 321-BuySellInvest.com. Michelle Carpenter with Inspiring Home Staging and Redesign. We are Brevard County's premier home staging team founded in 2013. You may ask, why stage your home or listing in a seller's market? Well, let me tell you, staged homes not only sell for 86% faster, but for 17% higher price. We have services for vacant, occupied, and luxury home staging. The definition of home staging is the professional service of preparing homes for sale in a way to appeal to potential buyers that generates a higher sale price. Our mission is faith, family, and community. Your home is your biggest investment, so stage yours today to get a higher price. Contact the team that inspires at 321-806-6543. Welcome back to the Space Coast Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Roofer Rob, here with Jesse Hall, Michelle Carpenter, and we have our awesome guest, Dan Perigini from TP Home Inspections. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, you did. Uh, Thank you. I, I always I always think of, you told me how to say it once, and it's just such, it's so cool when you say it right. You know, so. Yeah. Everybody likes to hear their name said right. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we, right. All, we all like that. I, I'm used to having mine ever said so, right. So, it's so when we when we left, uh, we were talking about the inspection uh, period. Okay, so there's a couple contingencies. One is the uh, the the inspection period, and uh, again, this this varies through from commercial to agricultural to vacant land to residential homes and and apartments. So uh, we're gonna stick to residential for the sake of the show. Um, so th they get the four point band you mentioned. Right. Um, do they need the wind mitt? Why and why not? They don't need a wind mitt to procure insurance, but okay. the all the insurance agents are going to specifically ask for a wind mitigation because okay. the wind mitigation explains to the insurance underwriter what features the house has that help it to mitigate mm -hmm. wind and windborne debris. And gotcha. based upon what those features are, they can usually offer some type of credits or discounts on the windstorm portion of the insurance because the house is, is capable of withstanding more wind or windborne debris. And that's important. Now, can a inspection, let's just say the inspection came a little bit rough, right? It's a fixer-upper. Uh, the, the insurance reluctantly was able to get a policy for this home. Um, 
is is there ever a time where a lender looks at the the report and says no um, not only will we not insure it for the wind mitt but we're not going to insure it at all i mean is, is that something that ever happens well i don't want to mince words but you said right. lender so the lender all the lender cares about is whether right. or not they can get insurance Okay. The lender wants the home to be insured because in case something happens to the house, they don't mm -hmm. want somebody to walk away and now they're left with a pile of well, junk. Yeah, no, right? yeah, no one wants to invest in so crap. So as far so. as the underwriters go, they can do what whatever they want. They mm -hmm. can turn around and decide that their risk is right. too high Gotcha. Okay. based upon what defects or deficiencies there are, the age and condition right. of these four major systems of the home. Roger. Um, what... What common myths, uh, you know, we, we want to leave the, the audience with some things uh, that they're probably not going to hear from just looking at books or, or getting advice from friends. What are some things um, that people sometimes miss or sometimes you wish they knew that they don't know? Um, common myth is that inspections are a necessary evil. Mm hmm and that all home inspectors are created equally. They think that a home oh. inspection is a home <laughs> inspection. Yeah, so they'll right. call the up and they'll just say, well, how much do you charge for a home inspection? Okay. And so that's like saying, well, how much does it cost to buy a new car? Well, if you buy a McLaren, right. you know, <laughs> it's $750,000. If you buy a Hyundai, it's twenty five grand. Sure. They both essentially do the same thing right. on a very elementary level, right? They keep you from right. walking to work. Right. But there's a big difference. Um, the way the state of Florida works is that there's no apprenticeship program for home inspector licensing right. all you need is a uh, hundred and twenty hours of education which is something that I'm qualified to provide I, I actually teach at a local school that teaches the pre-licensing requirement to become a home inspector but the hundred and twenty hours and a like a non really bad criminal record and you pass you don't even have to have been in an actual home there's no field training wow. requirement which wow. is something that I provide in my school right but you don't even have to have been in a house you can do everything online and if you pass the test, you become a home inspector. So that's crazy. crazy better talk. if we're talking. <laughs> if if our audience right. today is is people that are getting ready to buy a house, my right. recommendations usually when people call and they ask me about pricing, what I like to explain to them is let me give you a couple other questions you might want to ask ins inspectors, mm. like how did you get your training, or how long have you been I in like business, that. or here's a real good one: how long is it going to take you to do the inspection? I've been mm -hmm. doing home inspections for 10 years. I've done over 2,500 home inspections. My company's been in Brevard County since 1989. We're in our 32nd year. I can't get out of a house faster than two and a half to three hours on an average size house. And I've, s I've seen mm -hmm. it very, very you know, thorough. If I could, I would, right? Because the faster I could get out of there and do it, the more of them I can do, I'd make more money that way. But I can't do a good job in less than that time. So I tell people, if you talk to a home inspector and they say, Oh, it's going to take me an hour and a half, two hours. Right. I would say that that's a red flag. Easily. Right off the you bat. Know, what, are, what, are they, what are they not checking? Exactly. They're probably not going, um, if there's any crawl space anywhere, they're probably not going there, and they're probably not going to the attic space or even you know, peek, peeking their head up and, and telling you how, what kind of insulation grade is, you know, is up there. Um, yeah, so, y but you include that. We, we know uh, Dan and, and, the, and the gang at TP are uh, super thorough, so it really is. You, know, you want a Hyundai or a Mercedes? <laughs> Or I like your example, my dream car, the McLaren yeah. or a Hyundai, you know. So, yeah, not not all inspectors, just like not all agents, just not like not all, all create roofers equal. are created equal. Sure. And, and, not, and so forth. Anybody that has a license to do anything. I mean, here's a perfect example. We've right. all been on the road at some point behind somebody thinking, how did this clown possibly get a license <laughs> to drive a car? Well, they probably have a license, yeah. but, they're good, not good analogy, yes. but they're not following all the rules. And unfortunately, uh, right. that happens with every professional business and industry that there is there mm. are people that somehow manage to pass that test and they get it but they're not so great at it so make sure you got somebody that really cares about what they do um, there's a lot right. of good home inspectors or home inspector companies in Brevard County um, I'm not gonna say all of them are awful because that would not be yeah that's not that, that would not or be accurate fair. but right. the um, reason why you're here is because you are the expert you teach the other inspectors so you are the teacher yes dan is the authority he is the authority and that's what we pride ourselves here on the show is always having the best authority he's, here he's, he's the un, unwritten master absolutely <laughs> hardly i'm getting there <laughs> but but the thing is is the, the quality that yes. you put into it and the stuff that you check i have seen so many things overlooked mm. in, in my career but 
uh, your inspections are thorough? And that is a very good question because a lot of inspections, oh, 30 minutes to an hour, and right. if they tell you that, that's so. A so l let's skip to anoth another topic, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on from inspections. Um, what, what are some of the things that most people get excited about that they really, really shouldn't? Because when, when you see some words and some things and you, you get excited, like rotten wood or fungus or you know termites or you know but but are you know should people be excited if, if for instance a condenser of, a, of an ac is maybe un underperforming or or so forth or what, what do you what do you see dan as far no, as i mean something like excited that about most things are relatively easy simple not right. always expensive to fix i think what happens is the internet these days sometimes it does as much harm as it does good and Amen. people go on and they start doing Amen. some research and they'll call me up and yeah. they'll say well do you test for radon Right, and I said, "Well, no, I don't test for radon." They go, "You don't test for radon." I said, "Well, we don't have radon. Here. It hasn't like, we don't been have a, a radon in years. Yeah, we don't have a we don't have a threat of radon here. So it's like it's asbestos. Yeah, so it's, it's it's not really an issue. Or right. they'll say something mm -hmm. like, uh, like I'll have people call me up and they'll say, "Well, do you inspect for mold?" And they say, uh, "I'll say, well, let me ask you a question. I said, do you see any mold?" They go, "Well, yeah, I see mold. I'm gonna save you some money." You got mold, <laughs> right? If you could see it, you got it. I don't need to come right. out and tell you that you got it. What you can really need to find out at that point is why you have mold. Mold right. is caused from a combination of moisture and heat. If there's moisture intrusion, right. that's really the problem is where's the moisture coming from? Where's that leak or that moisture or whatever is causing the mold? Um, yeah. So that you know that's a little bit more important. So that when people call me and ask me those questions when they're getting ready to uh, call, get a quote, right. or potentially hire me to do a inspection for them those are the questions i ask when when i'm on the phone and hopefully i can already kind of smooth their feathers out a little bit from sure. the, from the get-go on some them. on some of these things because mold is a very nasty four-letter word for people buying houses everybody right. thinks mold all mold is horrible right. i'm gonna die my kids are gonna go into respiratory failure it doesn't always work that to way tear the house down <laughs> yeah yeah over. yeah the the brachystaliosis whatever the hell it is right the black mold um, do you know how to pronounce that? It always, it always no. I know. It, it, <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why, because I'm yeah. not a mold Bad. assessor. Right. That, that's a special license that mm -hmm. someone has to hold. That's not for a home inspector exactly. to assess mold unless they hold a mold assessor's and, license. And, and since we're on that topic, what kind of professional should they seek? They should seek a licensed mold assessor if, okay. they, if they have mold. Okay. Um, mold assessor. I, I heard it as another term. Um, mold remediation? That's a different license. That's a separate thing. Right. Remediating is getting rid of or right. you okay. know, getting rid of exactly. removing the mold. That's a separate thing also. Okay. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, anytime you there's suspicion of that, there's definitely a third party because you're right, it is a, is a, it is a four-letter word. You know, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't like to hear it um, similar to like, you know, uh, with destroying organisms. You know, we, we just don't like um, – the, these terms when they come back from the inspection, but make sure you understand what's going on. If if the if the outside um, shed, okay, that's not adjacent to the, to the main primary residence, but just an outdoor shed that's been there for thirty years is, you know, has a termite, you know, infestation. <laughs> don't <laughs> cry about it. You know, right. I mean, the thing was a tear down anyway. You know, termites get rid of it. Everywhere. Right. Exactly. It's what people have asked me. They said, right. "Did you win, happen to look at the shed?" And I said, "The shed." I said, "The eight by eight metal there. shed that's in the back that's all rusty." So let me ask you a question. If I said the shed's going to fall down, you're going to walk away from the deal because the shed in the backyard's <laughs> going to fall down? <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, that's, I, that's right. just th how a well, matter of fact with people. It's yeah, like, exactly. if, is that really, do you fight with your wife that often that you're worried that you may have to go sleep out in the shed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, why it, is uh, it that important? It's, exactly. fu it's funny the misconceptions. Uh, the first house that I flipped had termites for two years, and like mm -hmm. literally you could chip away and they would come in your, they could fall on your hand. Oh, yeah. And they were in there for two years, and the cost to remediate that we did have to rebuild the wall but it the cost was not anywhere near as much as you had thought and i was actually kind of surprised that that was all the damage they did in two mm. years like we all we had to do was just sister all the two by fours with other two by fours it was a, a rather easy fix like you know because right. you have the misconception oh my gosh there's termites and oh it's the end of the world You're not right. necessarily all the time you know I, anything's I, fixable i was a, i was excited about like just holes in walls I was like, oh my God, there's a hose in all. Until I learned that, you know, an eight by four sheet of drywall is only like three and a half dollars. Like it's <laughs> such an easy fix. Right. And easy. you and you bond the seam and you you know, you cover the whole I mean you 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 texture it and paint it. It's really the easiest fix. So yeah, so let let um let your agent 
kind of navigate through that inspection report, we have seen plenty of our share. Uh, so we could definitely help you grade which one to get excited about and which one is really a nothing burger. Because well, I see a lot of people get upset about just, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the electric box, you know, has a re reverse polarity on one of the switches. It's like, well, that's a dead switch. It's, but we'll, we'll, we'll cap it off. We'll make sure. I mean, it's just, a, it's a $15, you know, $2 fix or something, you know, a uh, 15 minute $2 fix by any, by anybody who could watch a YouTube video and, 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 and help out. So yeah, p don't panic on everything you find out. Make sure you, you measure, you know, the panics. Of course, the HVAC, the roof, these are all huge things. If those at all, look like they're questionable or especially like you know as we discovered earlier uh, if in fact you know the foundation is not stable um, you know th Even that's fixable yeah they're, they're, fi they're all fixable okay uh, you can always I get a new roof you can always, like yeah, yeah. but you have to judge what's what's more important that's you know why you work with a professional exactly so you have to judge you know the the, the, the pros and cons of, of what's coming out um, so and but it does get expensive not only making offers and it gets tiresome you know you have to you know make that escrow deposit um in the first couple of days and then you have to get an inspector and you know if you make offer get inspection make offer get inspection then so inspections are going to add up right so <laughs> you want to be don't you, just don't, you just you just don't want to get every house you can under contract and then just see if it's going to pass or fail you know your inspection um but be fair to both the seller you're going to find some things wrong not everything again you're signing an as is contract take it or leave it but if there is something that's huge, which is going to follow the seller anyway, if it's uh, you know an HVAC issue, if a coil needs to be repaired or whatever, um, let let the seller know and sure. and say this is what my inspector found. Um, I'm going to need you to to remedy this uh, before we move forward. By the way, it's something that you need to remedy anyway because it's every inspector is going to find it, right? And so it's not like it's going to go away if you ignore it. And so a lot of times if you if you go back to them with only a couple things, not a laundry list, like this is why my inspector found this is what you need to fix. Like, no, they're not going to fix every re reverse, you know, like, you know, the light switch that goes up and turns off and down and it's reversed on every other switch in the house, you know, and it's so, like that's an easy fix. Don't don't go back to the seller with like something like that. Sometimes we find things that no one's ever going to fix, right. but I exactly. have to put in the report exactly. because if I don't. Right. It could come back on me later on. For I'll give you a quick for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, windows in a bedroom. The window sill height is not supposed to be more than 44 inches from the finished floor mm. for the purpose of egress and safety. Right. So if I find a window that's in a bedroom and it's more than 44 inches from the floor, right. I have to put that in my report because, God forbid, if somebody there's a fire and somebody can't get out of that room and they die in that house... I'm going to be answering a lot of very uncomfortable questions mm. right. in a courtroom with some in, uh, attorney for an insurance company. But, but, but some windows, like you, like you're, go, like you're going to your point, is there Celestine or some other like architectural window that's supposed to be up in you know it's not going to be near the ground. It's not going to be code. Yeah, but it we shouldn't yeah. be in a bedroom. Right. Exactly. But if it's in it, but uh, what I'm saying is that right. that's something that sometimes we're going to put in a report mm. that no one's going to do it. Like the seller is not going to bust the wall out and put a new window in that's the <laughs> right right, yeah. right height because the home inspector right. said that it's it's not good for right. a bedroom. Right. And codes change over time. So when the house was built. 30, well, 40 years ago, that may have been acceptable. That, right. That not, can happen from time to time. But and a lot of historical homes are not being retrofitted. Right. You know, exactly. it's it's the same. Like, you know, again, these, these are pre, pig, pre so. yeah, these are pre oh. AC, you know, right. homes. So they don't have the ducts. Yeah. You know, they don't have anything that, you know, maybe they have a fireplace and that's about it. And a big old wide open porch mm -hmm. where you, you know, fan yourself off all summer long with some lemonade, you know. Um, but but let's you know, and, and let's be honest, a lot, a lot of the first people who were building that in that time. Uh, this was their vacation home. They they weren't down here full time. They go back up to the you know New England. Um, it's mm -hmm. just you know this was just their summer home, and um, it, it was great. You know Capone uh, you know frequented uh, this area on his way down to Miami. Uh, there's a lot of history here, but none none of these homes were were meant to be lived in during the summer. So of course, n you know those weren't those were afterthoughts. I can't imagine how people did it before air conditioning. Yeah, well let's let's, let's not go there. Um, we're gonna go to our final break we'll be right back and we're going to give you a, a nice little summary of uh, things that we uh, went over today and we're going to um, put this baby to rest and tell you more about what you could expect next next episode don't get, go anywhere we'll be right back
Hi, Michelle Carpenter with Inspiring Home Staging and Redesign. We are Brevard County's premier home staging team founded in 2013. You may ask, why stage your home or listing in a seller's market? Well, let me tell you, staged homes not only sell for 86% faster, but for 17% higher price. We have services for vacant, occupied, and luxury home staging. The definition of home staging is the professional service of preparing homes for sale in a way to appeal to potential buyers that generates a higher sale price. Our mission is faith, family, and community. Your home is your biggest investment, so stage yours today to get a higher price. Contact the team that inspires at 321-806-6543. Hi, my name is John Maselli with Movement Mortgage Beachside in the Atlantic. Movement Mortgage is a faith-based organization and our mission statement is as follows. We exist to love and value people by leading a movement of change in industries, corporate culture, and communities. To me, this mirrors my own business philosophy. My goal is to help people finance purchases or refinance current properties stress-free and at great terms. Help people and everything else follows. By the way, if you have equity tied up in your house, the only way to get it out is to refinance. Pull that equity out and pay off high interest debt or build a pool. My office is at 225 Fifth Ave, Suite 4, Indy Atlantic. Call me anytime at 321-248-6245 or visit my website, loanapplyapproved.com for more information or apply to qualify for a mortgage today. Welcome back to Space Coast Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Rupert Brom. What an amazing show we've had today with so much fun. Dan Perigini here from TP Inspections. Uh, uh, such a wealth of information because, uh, you know, it's very one of the most important parts of the process, I think, of, you know, buying the house is making right. sure that your investment is safe and, and protected. Well, hundred percent. You you want to know what you're getting into because a lot of like I mentioned, a lot of things are worth the panic, and a lot of things are not so worth the panic. And you know, let's be honest, um, especially in this climate in this market, you really can't be choosy and picky. And you know, you just kind of have to you know get with what's what's out there if you must buy in in this uh, this uh, this market. Like I mentioned, because the rates are just so good, uh, you just moved here. Welcome. You know, uh, so whether you're relocating or whatever else, uh, for instance, but you have to buy. So, again, this isn't the time to be super picky, uh, but just get in there. We're going to help you get all the contractors you need mm -hmm. to help you, okay? Uh, so just just bear with us. Get get into the home as long as it, as long as it matches all those boxes. If every single box is checked except for, like, does it need some improvement, like, you know, and uh, or does it need any improvement? So if that if that box is unchecked, it's okay. You got a team of people who are going to help you. We'll, we'll get you through it. And Let's Jesse just get you can home. help you get a home warranty. They have some really oh. great home warranties. So there's home warranties there. that cover all all of the, the mostly the moving parts, right? So your appliances, HVAC, and and and, and some certain Those things. Those plans work great too. I've used them. They're, personally, then they're so. they're affordable. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so you get like ones uh, starting at like 500 bucks a year. It's a basic package. It may just be your uh, your uh, kitchen appliances. If you want to add the HVAC, that's usually an upgrade, and uh, washer dryer or anything else you know outside of the uh, major kitchen components. Uh, but usually a whole house, um, five, six, maybe seven, eight hundred bucks a year. Mm -hmm. It's really not that bad when you could have a licensed technician to fix your dishwasher when it goes bad or refrigerator when it stops making ice or whatever else it's just a it's a really good policy um but so let's just pretend the inspection uh period is over you and the seller met in some areas you got some wins the seller uh, got their wins meaning they they really didn't try to help <laughs> but for instance if they were able to um you know uh let's just say remedy a, a leaky pipe or whatever else that you had them do it so now so now they met those conditions and you're moving along um the uh expiration uh again time um or the uh in, in inspection time has expired the next contingency that you're going to see is the financing and so now you, you go 
to your uh, loan officer. They're going to tell the processors, hey, it's a go. The inspection period is over, and, um, and they did whatever they had to do to move forward. So now it goes to, you know, through the processing, underwriting, then we get a clear to close. And finally, by the time we get a clear to close, the title company should have already done the title search. They would uh, have already found it uh, out if there was any liens or anything weird going on with that, that title. As long as it's free and clear, then they can move on to closing. And that whole process takes about 30 to 40 days. Um, John Maselli, He's mentioned over and over again. He could probably do it shorter than most people, uh, but but ideally, if it is a straightforward, um, you know, uh, a contract and uh, and a, and a lending product, you know, if it's FHA, there may be some other moving parts. They're going to send out their appraisal. They're going to do, you know, different things uh, than than most people. So, uh, but that process again, it, it happens all very quickly. As soon as as soon as that inspection period is over, there's only about 15 to 20 days left to get home you know to that that closing table and take possession of that home. final hurdles mm -hmm. yes uh but with the last four minutes let's go ahead and just say pre pretend they're clear to close they went to closing congratulations hurrah Ooh. uh what now what next do you think so now you gotta call michelle and have michelle come out and make sure that your house is decorated correctly yeah well, she, well, or at least maybe have offer her some consulting. Yeah, some know, color palettes. Mm -hmm. she'll, she'll review some paint uh, swatches. Arranging what else? furniture. Arranging furniture that you that you have existing. Mm -hmm. um, way better to paint before you move uh, in, right? Absolutely. If you have to. I mean, it's no way easier. Mm -hmm. and yeah, fresh so coat of paint. Is that what yeah, you so if if you can, ideally time it to where, let's just say you're in a 12 month lease. You call me. And, and we get, you know, John, uh, you, you pre-approve about 90 days, okay? Because those pre-qual letters will last about 90 days. Um, so we have a little bit. So why don't we get started early, right? Because what's the worst that could happen? You've already paid for your last month, okay? You're not coming out of pocket to live there for free. Um, and we could usually work out uh, that you also don't have to pay your first month rent. You know, either I'll take care of it or we'll get the, the title uh, or maybe not the title, but we'll get the lender to maybe you know help out and so now you don't pay that that last month at the 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 lease that you're at and you're not paying the first month at where you're going so that gives you extra cash and that 30-day window to live between two places now that's ideal not everybody has to not everybody does that some people i've actually seen at the closing table uh we were at the title company in the morning to close on the house they sold and in the afternoon we got the keys to the house they bought and it's just like that you're mm -hmm. literally i mean just it's just Amazing an exchange guys. of keys, yes. and <laughs> they already have the moving truck loaded. Exactly. <laughs> and the I just <laughs> moved two yeah. years ago, and we actually had the moving truck loaded from yep. the house the night before. Had it on hold on the truck. Yep. We signed the paperwork in the driveway of the new house. Yes. <laughs> ice creams and in the <laughs> ice creams in the cooler melting. You're like, got all your frozen goods. Can we hurry this? Truck along, is please. parked yeah. down the road. Hey, okay, you're you're good. Come on. <laughs> go go go. Yeah. Park in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hog and dies on ice. I don't want to know. Um, but yeah, it's, it, and it's crazy like that. But ideally, if you could make that thirty year trans or that thirty year thirty day transition uh, between your your outgoing and, in, and your incoming houses, uh, that's really ideal. So so you can make it your own and get you and you get the the fine folks at uh, Inspiring Home uh, Staging and, and Redesign to to really make it home and, and really add some some fresh things uh, that maybe were being neglected. Maybe just a real quick changing color in the in the common area does it wonders you know for for the new home and, and gets it updated and, and, and it make it your own so you got the house uh you're also going to want to uh you know a couple of days in advance if you have existing utilities say if you have an fpl account or uh at t spectrum whatever account so you want to make sure you schedule to have your uh, fpnl uh, transferred your your at t or uh or spectrum uh, account transferred and and it's it's a f flip of a switch really I mean everything's digital right now they don't really have to send somebody out there to your home they just click a switch so whenever you're ready like hey I'm closing at four I, I need I need the power on at five because you know that's that's what you and the, the seller agree to okay well I'm turning it off at four and then I'm taking over at five you know so maybe there's an hour or some because you know FPL is always always like kind of delayed so <laughs> typically you get like a little bit of you know where where the both accounts are actively on that on that uh that uh that uh, that address so anyway uh get all your utilities and ready to go so when the closing day does come it's an easy transfer um again 
hopefully the seller took our advice earlier so you know who your landscaper is you know who your pool guy is everything's listed you know the days you know that are trash days and recycle days hopefully all that's uh already there waiting for you if not then that that seller probably didn't hear our show yep. they're, they're probably they're not bad. as they're bad probably not as good as a, a seller who listened to our show mm-hmm. so there you go <laughs> it's been an hour folks any closing uh comments or uh fun things that you want to remind any buyer out there thinking of getting property just do your research, work mm-hmm. with professionals, mm-hmm. and uh, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, we have all the professionals right here, so it's super simple. You we don't have to look too far. You. Exactly. All in one place. Um, well, thank you so much. This has been another uh, episode here from all of us at Space Coast Real Estate Show. We really thank you for tuning in, uh, having a listen, and, of course, for anything you ever need, uh, we're just going to have Rob share his contact info with you. So uh, three so three two one three mm-hmm. six eight one eight eight one. Any questions, comments, or you know, we love to help. Yeah. So at 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 risk of having all of us give our our number, you know, this week will be will be Rob's contact. So you contact him. You bother him for <laughs> until our next episode. And we hope you you join us. Uh, thanks so much for subscribing, next week. giving us a follow, and uh, yeah, certainly we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.